So thanks for attending my talk. So as you saw, uh, today's talk will be about quantization, and especially about how uh, quantization can unlock, like basically having like elements working on your computer. So uh, the first slide about me. So I'm Markson, ML engineer at Hugging Face. I'm part of the open source team, and I lead the quantization effort. So that means like. Uh, uh, making sure that quantization uh, works with transformers model, uh, help diffuse the make that happen, and make it possible also with PEFT. Uh, but I'll talk about that later. And also, I'm a core maintainer of the Accelerate library, which is a Python library to make uh, distributed training easy. So let's dive in. So as you saw recently, like uh, uh, LNMs keeps getting bigger and bigger. We started like in uh, 2017 with Transformers, with uh, a model with 0 0.05 billion. And now uh, we, ended, we have like Lama uh, four or five uh, billion model, which is like pretty huge. And uh, as you can see in this graph, like basically uh, the GPUs uh, can't follow. <laughs> like uh, in 2022, 20, uh, we have like uh, A100, which only has like 80, uh, gigabyte of memory, and I think that uh, recently we have like maybe the uh, H200 that has like maybe uh, one uh, 160, which is like not enough to run these models. But uh, yeah, uh, so uh, we need to find a way to uh, make this uh, model accessible, and uh, so I'll talk about a few uh, uh, model compression techniques. So the goal of like model compression techniques is basically we have the original model and we want to make a smaller model that performs basically the same. So one of the most well-known techniques is like pruning. So the concept of pruning is really simple. Basically, we just remove connections that do not improve the model. So for LMs, it can be like remove layers, remove weights. Uh, pruning is really interesting, but uh, it requires a, f a few things to make it like um, efficient in production. So uh, pruning enables us to basically uh, store less, um, have less um, re uh, memory requirement for bigger models. Uh, but uh, we need to have like to prune the model in a specific way. For example, here I shared like that uh, we need to have a structure space matrix that we can uh, after compressed into like a, a smaller uh, matrix, and uh, these enable us to have like uh, less memory. But also uh, with a specific hardware, we can actually make uh, the matrix multiplication faster. Uh, the problem with pruning uh, with LMs is that uh, we still have uh, too much degradation. Uh, the fill is uh, still evolving. So I hope to see like uh, in a few years like uh, LMs uh, also working with uh, pruning. But, uh, um, but right now uh, it requires further fine tuning to recover uh, from the performance degradation. But the goal would be to have like pruning without any training at all. Uh, another well-known uh, technique is uh, knowledge distillation. So basically, we have like the original model, which is the instructor, and uh, we try to transfer the knowledge of the instructor to the smaller model, which will be the students. Uh, for example, uh, distilled BERT is the distilled version of BERT, and uh, GEMA 2 uh, 9B is uh, the distilled version of uh, the 27 billion parameters. Uh, we can combine uh, these uh, two methods uh, to train uh, LLMs, and this is what Meta did with uh, Lama 2.3, uh, no, 3.2 for the 1 billion and 3 billion. Uh, as you can see here, uh, they used uh, so uh, uh, the 8 billion parameters model and the 70 billion parameter model uh, to uh, do the pruning and the distillation, and uh, they even used uh, the uh, 405 billion parameters to generate uh, synthetic data to further uh, f um, instruct fine-tune the model afterwards. Uh, one of the big bloggers of uh, knowledge distillation is uh, that uh, obviously not everyone knows how uh, to train or distill a model, but can afford also to do that. And lastly, one of uh, so the 
key topic of today, which uh, is about like quantization, which is a really nice uh, compression uh, technique. So the concept of quantization is very easy. Basically, it's the process of mapping a large set to a smaller set of values. So uh, as you may know, uh, with uh, LLMs, uh, most model or uh, weights are stored in uh, FP32. And these days, even even uh, FP16 or before 16. Uh, but it would be interesting to see if we can uh, store this weight with, uh, in lower precision, for example, in 8 bits. So, but uh, is it possible? And uh, what's the degradation of doing that? Uh, if we do uh, this approximation, uh, our model will end up being like four times smaller, which is like a pretty big deal. Uh, for example, uh, the, uh, let's have a, a look at the biggest lama, the four or five billion model. Uh, if we want uh, to load the model uh, in uh, FP32, it will require us to have uh, one, uh, one, uh, 1,620 gigabytes, which is uh, quite a lot. Uh, but they uh, released an FP8 version so that people could actually like run uh, this FP8 model in only one node. So for example, uh, eight, uh, H100 with uh, 80 gigabytes each. Uh, now uh, I wanted like to uh, uh, make you uh, understand how uh, quantization uh, can actually work. And uh, I'm gonna present you quickly uh, how uh, linear quantization works. Uh, it's also uh, known as like a round to nearest uh, quantization or uh, as max quantization. So let's start with uh, uh, this uh, tensor, uh, which is in uh, FP32, so 32 bits. And uh, the goal will be at the end to quantize it in uh, int 8, so uh, between minus uh, 128 and uh, 127. So the, um, the idea is very simple. So we map the extreme values together and uh, we fill the rest uh, with values following a linear mapping um, that we got. And this is uh, the quantized tensor that we get at the end. Uh, so now we delete the original tensor and we only save uh, the quantized tensor plus a few uh, parameters uh, that we use to, to, uh, to get our linear mapping. So these uh, parameters are the scales and the zero point. I'll come back to the theory a bit later. But uh, as you can see now, uh, yeah, uh, we managed like, to save uh, like four times the memory. Uh, but uh, uh, now, how do we get back to our original tensor? Uh, from the quantized tensor and the linear mapping. Uh, basically, we just follow the linear uh, uh, relationship that we have. And if we do that, uh, so we will get, uh, for the extreme values, we'll get those specific values, and we continue to do that. And we end up with this specific dequantized tensor in uh, FP32. And if uh, we subtract those two uh, tensor, we'll see that uh, this is the uh, quantization error tensor that we get at the end, and we can see that's pretty accurate. Uh, if we want to look a bit at the theory of uh, the linear uh, quantization, uh, basically the idea is quite simple. So we have the original value, which is equal uh, to the scale times the quantized value minus the zero point, and as we saw uh, in the first slide about the extreme values, uh, basically the fact that we map those two, uh, those extreme values give us like uh, two equations that enable us to get the scales and the zero point. And from that point, we have everything to uh, get uh, the quantized uh, tensor as well as the original value. Uh, quantization has many pros. so. Uh, we have like minimal uh, degradation in performance. I'll come back to that point uh, in the next slide. 
the calibration steps is optional. There are like uh, many quantization methods that improves on the linear quantization by doing a calibration steps, basically using a data set uh, to, uh, make to make sure that uh, the uh, quantization error is as small as possible and that the expected output of the LLMs is, uh, is better. Uh, with quantized model, uh, we can actually have faster models. And uh, for, uh, for example, with the linear quantization, uh, these uh, quantization methods can be applied directly on any model without any adjustment. So uh, not only on LLMs, it works with computer vision model, audio model, diffusion model. Uh, coming back to the performance, so uh, let's see how much accuracy do we sacrifice when we quantize LLMs. Uh, so this is a study from uh, Neuromagic. Uh, they basically uh, uh, tested uh, the quantized uh, model uh, that, they, uh, that, they, that they created. So uh, uh, in this graph, they tested uh, the FP8 uh, model, so 8-bit model. Uh, and they compared it, uh, uh, they did uh, the, the evaluation on uh, many benchmark. So these benchmark are like uh, from the academic world, but also real world task. And they saw that there were actually like practically no degradation at all for uh, eight bit uh, models. And uh, they also tested uh, uh, with more uh, quantization schemes uh, with uh, like, for example, the eight, uh, the four bit and uh, the results are like very promising and uh, this correlates quite nicely with uh, the benchmark we did uh, internally also. Uh, but um, as I said earlier, uh, these quantization methods uh, works also with uh, all kind of models, I guess. Uh, so let's check what's the result with a diffusion model. So. Uh, we used uh, the quantal library to quantize uh, uh, the diffusion model uh, in uh, FP8. So this is uh, the result uh, without quantization, so in uh, FP16, uh, 16 bits, and this is the result in uh, FP8. So uh, at least for diffusion model, uh, this is uh, pretty uh, convincing. Uh, now I'm gonna talk about how quantization uh, can be used at every stage of the model development. That means uh, from pre-training, uh, during fine-training, and uh, uh, for inference. So one of the use cases during pre-training is uh, FP8 mixed uh, precision training that uh, a lot of companies are actually trying to make it possible. Uh, uh, I think about NVIDIA. Uh, at Hugging Face, we're also uh, working on making it possible with the Nano Neutron uh, library. And uh, here are the results of the PyTorch uh, team. Uh, they managed uh, to, uh, um, uh, to make uh, FP8 uh, mixed precision uh, uh, working. And as you can see, the, uh, the loss uh, is the same uh, as the BF16 uh, uh, model. Uh, and uh, uh, the goal of uh, having basically this FP8 uh, uh, mixed precision training is that it's actually uh, it's faster, and uh, um, we can uh, so we have mm, so we have 1.5 uh, speed ups uh, with uh, FP8 compared with uh, Biflow 16, uh, thanks to the um, uh, GMM on the H100 and a faster gather uh, since uh, um, the weights are in. Uh, uh, int 8, so less memory. Uh, it's compatible with FSDP uh, v2. And uh, um, since the bundle has been like trained uh, with FP8 in mind, if we quantize uh, after the model in FP8, uh, I think that we will have like very minimal degradation. Uh, another uh, really uh, useful uh, feature of quantization uh, when thinking about pre-training and fine-training is basically um, um, the quantization aware uh, uh, features. So we stimulate uh, the quantization uh, using, uh, during training uh, to mitigate uh, mod uh, model performance degradation uh, that we have during uh, quantization. So training while um, keeping, uh, um, like simulating the quantization 
and uh, one of um, the use case of uh, these techniques uh, is uh, with the 1.58 uh, uh, bit LLM that uh, uh, was a, a pretty big uh, big deal uh, a few a few months ago. So uh, in this uh, paper, um, they presented a new um, architecture with LLM with uh, ternary weights. So uh, each weight uh, has. Uh, 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 three possible values, minus one, zero, and one. Uh, and uh, because of these uh, ternary weights, uh, it means that with uh, a specific hardware, uh, we can uh, potentially uh, uh, basically uh, infer uh, this model uh, very, very fast compared to uh, uh, traditional uh, MatMilt uh, hardware. Uh, since uh, addition is, uh, and subtraction is uh, easier than uh, doing uh, mat uh, matrix multiplication. So uh, this paper is very promising because uh, the models are the basically uh, with ternary weights and uh, we can uh, potentially have like very, very fast models because we don't have the bottleneck of uh, the matrix multiplication. And uh, they manage uh, to show uh, that um, uh, they, uh, that they can train uh, this model uh, with the same uh, performance as uh, um, as the model in uh, full precision, uh, as you can see uh, from uh, these benchmarks uh, on the the last two rows. If you check that um, uh, every uh, benchmark values, uh, but the thing is that they didn't manage to make it work with. Uh, uh, they didn't manage to fine tune uh, the models in 1.58. Uh, so uh, the biggest bottleneck, I guess, is that uh, it costs a lot to pre-train models, and uh, not everyone uh, is willing to do that. So at Hugging Face, um, we try to make uh, fine tuning uh, possible uh, with uh, uh, this, uh, the 1.58-bit uh, LLM architecture. So we start from a pre-trained uh, LAMA, then we try uh, to use a quantization aware training uh, to uh, make it run uh, with ternary rates. And uh, we have a blog post about that on how we managed to uh, make it work. And uh, we published uh, uh, the different model uh, on, uh, on Hugging Face Hub. And uh, these are the results uh, we got, uh, which are, uh, and we compared it with uh, this. Um, with model with the same size, so a different uh, version of LAMA. Uh, to run uh, these uh, 1.58 bits LLM, uh, there are two choices. So uh, a few weeks ago, uh, Microsoft released the bitnet.cpp uh, project, so the official inference engine. And uh, what is nice uh, uh, with this uh, uh, engine is that uh, it uh, uh, the the speed is very fast. Oh, uh, I can run the. Oh. It's very fast uh, on CPU, uh, and on uh, Mac. I think that uh, this was uh, with the two billion, uh, three billion models that, uh, and it is running on a, on a MacBook. Uh, the other solution to run this model is uh, using uh, transformers. So you just uh, pass as usually uh, the um, the name of the model to. Uh, uh, to create uh, the, uh, the model and the tokenizer using the from pre-trained uh, methods. Now, um, uh, for the inference phase, uh, one of the, the main uh, use of quantization is basically uh, the quantization, uh, the post-training quantization. So uh, methods uh, that you can apply actually on any models out of the box uh, with minimal uh, performance degradation. So uh, I explained earlier uh, about the round to nearest uh, algorithm, uh, but since then uh, a lot of paper actually build on this uh, specific theory and uh, make it better. So we have like uh, uh, the uh, bits and bytes library that uh, added like uh, LLM.int8 and uh, QLORA uh, quantization schemes. We have uh, GPTQ 
uh, AWQ and uh, also uh, the very well-known uh, GGUF uh, quants that you can run with uh, lama.cpp uh, library. And uh, uh, from my experience, 8-bit is pretty uh, loss, like 8-bit uh, quantization is uh, lossless, and 4-bit uh, is, uh, is pretty, is uh, where uh, the accuracy starts to, uh, to degrade a bit. Uh, to uh, quantize uh, the model using, uh, uh, let's say, uh, transformers library, uh, you can uh, easily do that uh, by passing uh, the quantization config attribute, and uh, you just need to specify uh, the, the quantization config that you, uh, you want. So in transformers, uh, nowadays, uh, we support uh, most uh, quantization schemes. Uh, so most models uh, that you find on the hub uh, are um, supported uh, with transformers. But uh, in this specific case, uh, we are uh, quantizing the, mo uh, the, the model on the fly. Uh, if you want uh, to have a serialized model, uh, what you can do is uh, basically look for the model uh, that you're interested in, uh, in uh, Hugging Face Hub, and we have uh, a section to find uh, the quantize, uh, the, uh, a few quantized uh, uh, models. So, uh, for example, for the LAMA uh, 3.1 8 billion instruct uh, model, we have uh, 222 models, and if you click on that, it will show you uh, uh, yeah, the list of uh, the quantized model. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, we support many uh, quantization uh, uh, backend in Transformers, so feel free uh, to check out uh, the documentation to find the one that suits you the best. Uh, uh, if you want to run uh, GGUF cons, uh, which I think are very popular uh, with LLMs, uh, you can uh, uh, you can just uh, find uh, the model, the GGUF model that you're interested in, uh, in Hugging Face Hub, and we uh, give you all the steps to run it uh, efficiently. And if there is a model that is not supported, we have uh, a spaces which is called GGUF My Repo that uh, enables you to basically uh, quantize the model uh, and uh, it's uh, pretty fast. It takes maybe uh, about a minute to quantize a 70 billion model. Uh, we also uh, support, um, there's also a lot of uh, other uh, library that support quantization. So we have like v uh, VLM is not part of uh, Hugging Face but uh, is also a very popular uh, choice. Um, we have uh, TGI and uh, also recently uh, Diffusers Library. Uh, lastly, uh, about the inference phase. So we are working uh, with uh, uh, the PyTorch team on the Executorch uh, project to make it uh, possible to uh, basically export uh, transformer models uh, with, uh, uh, with quantization uh, so that they run efficiently uh, on, the, on the edge. Uh, one question that uh, people may have is like, okay, uh, my model doesn't perform that well after quantization, but I don't really have the resources uh, to perform uh, uh, QHE fine tuning since it requires to have all the weights uh, in uh, FP32 and the optimizer state and everything in, uh, uh, in uh, like FP32, let's say. So one way to, f uh, to do that would be to uh, uh, do uh, QLR uh, training uh, basically, uh, as you can see here, uh, we have the uh, pre-training weights. So these pre-training weights, we quantize uh, them, and we freeze the weights. So these weights, we don't train them, uh, but, we tr uh, but to that base model, we add uh, LoRa adapters, uh, which are basically just uh, small uh, linear layers. And uh, these are the, the layers that we are actually going to train. And uh, it has been proven that uh, uh, this uh, training uh, setup uh, works quite nicely, uh, especially uh, in uh, diffusers, where you can see like uh, for each uh, diffusers model, uh, lots of uh, LoRa's adapters. Uh. So, uh, to apply uh, to to, uh, to perform uh, QLoRa fine tuning, uh, it's quite simple. So first, uh, you need to uh, uh, load the model with the from pre-train uh, method. Then uh, you create the LoRa config, uh, precising uh, the, the rank of uh, uh, the adapter uh, and the task type. Uh, you add the adapter uh, to the model, 
and then you can uh, run your training script uh, on this specific model. And at the end, uh, you just need uh, to uh, save uh, the, the adapters. Uh, then uh, the last step after uh, Culera fine tuning is that uh, you can uh, actually uh, merge the adapter back uh, to the uh, base model so that uh, at the end you only have uh, you, you don't have like separate uh, linears and that makes uh, that might make like the inference uh, phase slower so uh, for example uh, as you can see here this is what was done with uh, diffusers uh, library uh, we uh, dequantized, uh, merged uh, the, the low rise adapter uh, to uh, the base model, and we requantized it again, and uh, uh, it gave us uh, the same results. Uh, the second one uh, was, uh, was to show that uh, if uh, we don't uh, follow uh, this specific um, uh, logic, we might end up with, uh, um, with a different results. Uh, so in this case, uh, what we shouldn't do is directly merge uh, the, um, uh, the lower ad adapters into the quantized model. Um, we have, uh, uh, if you want to have more information, uh, we have a blog post about that uh, on the PyTorch uh, website. And we also have uh, uh, a video uh, that uh, two colleagues of mine uh, did uh, during the PyTorch conference uh, last year. Uh, to, uh, to conclude uh, this talk, uh, I wanted to uh, share that uh, uh, the big tech is also uh, quantizing a lot. Uh, and it's nice to see that they are investing uh, on that. Uh, so I talked about like Llama 3.1, uh, one of uh, 405 billion models. Uh, they showed like the FP8 model so that it's easier uh, for the community to actually run these models. Uh, and uh, more recently, they introduced a quantized version of their smaller models so that they could be used on the edge devices uh, uh, easily. Uh, also, uh, recently we saw uh, the rise of like small LLMs. Uh, so at Meta, we had like these uh, 1 billion and 3 billion uh, models. Uh, but uh, Gemma, uh, so Gemma 2, uh, are also, uh, have also like uh, small models. Uh, Gemma 2 are coming are from uh, Google. And uh, the uh, fee uh, models that are coming from uh, Microsoft. So, uh, and uh, lastly, the small LM, small LM uh, models from uh, Hugging Face Team. So it's really nice to see that uh, uh, Big Tech is also like trying to uh, create the best uh, small LLMs so that uh, uh, we can easily run them on the computer, but also on edge devices without really relying on quantization. But still, uh, if uh, we can uh, get uh, the same performance with quantization, uh, we should do it. And uh, if you want to learn more about uh, quantization, uh, we released uh, a few months ago two courses with uh, Deep Learning AI. So feel free uh, to check the course if you uh, really want to better understand how uh, quantization works. And uh, yeah, this was the last slide. And uh, you can download the QR code. Uh, uh, download the slide with the QR code. Uh, so does it really Uh, does a, anyone has a, a question? Like um, this is a very fast field, and constantly we're receiving new models, uh, new architectures, and you know new material to work on. So, uh, from your side, since you like maintain these models on on hogging face uh, day to day. What are the common challenges that you see uh, on developer teams when they try to implement these on production levels? Because I, I, uh, part of my, my work is to go from the, let's say, the lab to industrial applications. And uh, I want to know what's your point of view on, on, on those challenges? 
I, uh, do you mean uh, spe uh, like, uh, specifically about deploying uh, this model on production or uh, about like quantized models? Like the quantized models on production. Oh, the, the quantized models. Um, I think that uh, uh, you should better rely on the uh, like inference engine that uh, already exists and uh, that tries to make uh, this uh, quantized model uh, like run faster. Like uh, I'm thinking about uh, TGI or VLM that uh, tries to uh, like uh, make this uh, quantized model as fast as possible. And uh, yeah. but are you talking more about like the reliability of these models or like uh, the performance, like uh, like uh, inference speed? Uh, uh, like uh, I think it's uh, uh, both things that you're mentioning is uh, ringing bells because it's, I feel it's like a combination of both. Like uh, uh, how how much do I, is it the trade-off of? Because you show some amazing numbers and I think it's very promising. Like because you almost don't, don't lose performance. Uh, however, like uh, to manage uh, to know what's the most common challenges that you've heard. If it's about the performance, about the cost, about the the, the data, about what applications uh, are the most common for these kind of, of, of uh, techniques, um, or is too soon to know to, to have information about the industrial applications of these kind of models? Uh, I think that uh, quantized models are uh, always uh, like are actually uh, used in production already. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, like I, I know that, uh, for example, um, uh, lots of. Uh, People are actually using the uh, uh, FP8 uh, uh, with the b biggest lama that uh, Meta released because uh, it's, it was a model that basically Meta uh, really uh, like they they did research on that uh, to uh, and they try to get like the best quantized model. Uh, so uh, uh, about the accuracy, I don't think uh, this is uh, like uh, an issue. Uh, like people uh, won't try to. Uh, uh, to check on the quality because they have faith on, on Meta, uh, but on the on the inference side, uh, I guess uh, you can still make a, a big improvement uh, on that by uh, really uh, by getting like better kernels uh, to work uh, with uh, these uh, these models. Like I saw like uh, recently uh, a few uh, like uh, from uh, like uh, like from last year like. Um, Mm, there are many uh, research labs that tries to uh, uh, code better kernels for these specific uh, quantization schemes. So we had, like, uh, for uh, GPTQ model, uh, we had um, uh, Marlin kernels, and uh, more recently, uh, the Machete uh, kernels from uh, Neural Magic uh, Labs. But so uh, yeah, they are basically uh, trying to. Uh, uh, so to me, the biggest bottleneck is to have like kernels that actually works with uh, your uh, with your uh, hardware. Like try to make these uh, quantization uh, methods uh, work with uh, any kind of hardware is uh, very hard. That's a good insight. Thank you very much. Hello, uh, Peter. Uh, I, I have a question because I heard about small language models, uh, but first time I heard about small large language models. From your perspective, what is the difference? Um, I think that uh, the the difference is uh, uh, before it uh, the the issue uh, was that uh, we didn't have the uh, um, like the enough hardware uh, to uh, to train these uh, these uh, these big models and uh, but uh, we uh, with all the the hype and everything like. Uh, uh, all these uh, big uh, big company had like too ma too much resources, <laughs> and we ended up with like a Falcon with, like, uh, with uh, over 100 billion uh, parameters, and uh, uh, people keep uh, like uh, trying to uh, uh, to make bigger models be since uh, they think that uh, yeah uh, scaling it uh, uh, scaling the number of uh, parameters is an easy way to to have uh, better models. Um, but uh, I think that they, they saw that uh, uh, there's like a huge potential uh, in uh, local uh, use of, uh, of these models. And uh, we, we can't really run such large models on, uh, on our computer. And actually, uh, small, like, um, small models can actually be like, very useful, uh, which wasn't the case before. 
and uh, with more and more of these uh, small uh, models being trained and being very good at uh, so the, they are like investing a lot more on uh, like uh, trying to uh, basically uh, make the best uh, 7 billion uh, parameters uh, yeah My turn here. Uh, first, thanks for the presentation here. It's very helpful, useful here. I, I have one question. Actually, the question you asked uh, in the slide itself says that uh, the resource about the quantized aware training there. So I'm very curious, like, uh, what would be the resource, uh, how much would be the resource that would be used for a normal fine tune to finish the, the QAT there? Do you have any? Like a quantitative kind of a value there? Is there kind of a linear relationship with the normal quantization? Uh, the resource, like how much resource it would need to finish a, a normal fine tune for the QAT? Are you, your resources like in uh, in uh, giga of, uh, how much space do we need uh, in the computer? Yeah, maybe the data set, how many rounds of the. Oh, it's uh, basically like performing uh, QHT training is the uh, takes the same uh, amount of uh, of uh, memory as uh, a normal training. Uh, what like about in, the data sets there? Do you uh, the data sets uh, you you can you can use the same one as uh, the the one you use to uh, to train your model. Like it's just uh, really like uh, it's not about the data. Uh, it's uh, it's more about like just uh, simulating uh, the quantization uh, uh, perturbation uh, during the training. So all the steps uh, remain the same: uh, memory usage, uh, everything. Uh, it's just that uh, during the forward, we uh, quantize uh, the the weight and we de dequantize it immediately. So it's just uh, during the forward. But uh, I'm curious, like, uh, how many GPUs were used there? Uh, or, or how do, would you set up the training system there? Uh, you, you would set it uh, the, the same way as you are, you are doing a, a, oh, the, a normal the, training. Yeah. Oh, the normal, OK. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's the same. OK, good. Yeah, so this is why uh, I introduced uh, Culera, so, uh, so that uh, we don't actually train uh, the, the, the whole model. So. Uh, uh, mm. So the pre-trained weights are freezed, but we only train the uh, the adapters, which are like very very small. Maybe like a, uh, it's like a 0 0.1 percent of the weights, something like that. Oh, that's that's impressive. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? If no, can I ask one question? Yeah. yeah. So maybe I misheard, but so you said that so during the uh, quantization we can just make the parameter as one zero minus one compared to the float, floating point, and it's much faster just to add or subtract the parameters rather than doing the yeah some floating point calculation. And you mentioned we have some very specific hardware for that compared to GPU. Oh, uh, uh, um, what, is, what I mean is like we still need to uh, to create uh, this hardware that uh, um, uh, that uh, that takes into account that we only have like a subtraction and addition uh, when uh, performing uh, uh, this specific uh, this specific operation. Oh, so we, uh, yeah, so we need to create. Yeah, 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 basically. Basically. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But I think that uh, something uh, many uh, uh, like chip contractors are really interested in, like uh, like uh, with uh, this uh, kind of paper, they are they are more likely to yeah to f uh, to um, actually invest uh, uh, to create these chips and try to uh, to see uh, what's the um, what's the end result. Like, uh, is it possible to uh, um, uh, is it actually possible to have faster inference? But yeah, the actually, uh, but at least the models uh, train with ternary weights are uh, available. I see. Thanks so much. Okay. Uh, then uh, thank you uh, for attending the talk. <laughs>